We all know that the Toronto Blue Jays have a logjam in the middle of the infield, whether it be at shortstop and second base. So Santiago Espinal has been a guy that's kind of been lost in the shuffle, and the Blue Jays have been shopping him. They've, they've made it known that they've been shopping him. And Ben Nicholson-Smith came out with an article saying that the Blue Jays are looking to swap Espinal for a power-hitting outfielder, and we'll break that down on this episode of Jays Digest, as well as Jorge Soler. Apparently, he was never in the cards for the Blue Jays, so we'll have that and much more coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Briones, alongside host Nick Goss, and uh, congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs for winning the Super Bowl. Great game yesterday, one of the better Super Bowls in recent memory, at least for me. It was defensive stalwart in the first half, and then just a great coming out party for Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in the second half. It was a great game. Hope you all enjoyed it. But now we're solely focused on baseball, Nick. Opening day is right around the corner. Spring training is about to get started in a about 12 days, if I'm not mistaken. So we're right there. We're right on the cusp of having baseball on our television every single day. And I couldn't be more excited. But we're going to talk about a potential trade that could uh, beef up this Blue Jays lineup a little bit more heading into the season. And Santiago Espinal, a guy that has kind of been lost in the shuffle, someone who we don't really know how much playing time he's going to get this season with the acquisition of Isaiah Kiner Falefa. He's been getting shopped around. So. What's the deal here? What are the Blue Jays looking to do with him? I think we have a pretty good idea according to this Ben Nicholson-Smith article. Yeah, it's finally baseball season, and you've been cl- uh, clamoring for a big uh, one more bat to be added to this team. A quick reminder before you to hit the subscribe button around the road to 12,000, but we all agree that we need one more kind of bat of this Blue Jays team and for the Blue Jays team to bolster them because Espinal hasn't really been doing that the past few years, and Ben Nicholson-Smith went on his podcast as well as he put in an article a few weeks ago when he first kind of hinted at it, and now he reiterated this uh, on his most recent podcast, and he mentioned a hypothetical Espinal for Austin Slater swap, saying that there could be a framework there, and that's a deal that really intrigues a lot of people, including myself, and we covered this a while ago when it first was brought up by Ben Nicholson Smith in his article, and now he's kind of doubling down on the fact that there could be a framework there, and that, at the very least, the Jays are shopping Santiago Espinal. Now, Peter, I do have the trade machine, which I'll get up in a second, but I just want to get your initial thoughts on this potential trade with Espinal for Slater. Again, Slater doesn't do much defensively, but he's a guy who can play the outfield. He can hit very, very well, which is uh, that's solid. You can see his stats here. He had a 107 OPS. I should say very well in comparison to Santiago Espinal. He was very good in 2022. He's 30 years old. Peter, what are your thoughts on uh, on Austin Slater as a whole? He wouldn't be an upgrade defensively. He doesn't really hit for a lot of power, but he would be an upgrade purely hitting-wise compared to Santiago Espinal. Yeah, well, that's a, those are pretty good numbers, but in a short sample size there with only 185 at-bats. I mean, the, the on-base percentage is intriguing to me. Don't see too much strikeout in his game. Actually, no, I do. That's uh, it's quite a bit of strikeouts. 58 strikeouts and 207 plate appearances. That's almost a 25. That's more than a 25% strikeout clip. So he's going to get on base. He's, he's going to strike out quite a bit as well. But he is someone that does have more power potential than Espinal. If you pop up his stats over there again for me, Nick, I, I mean, he has had uh, 12 home runs in a season and, and, and very limited plate appearances. Yeah. So obviously, if you're looking at just the face numbers here, it's not great. doesn't jump out at you, the home runs and the RBIs. But if he does get a little bit more run or if he's just strapped to a platoon role, which he was in San Francisco, the production could be pretty good. And, and he's been solid, not great over the course of his career, but one that could definitely help beef up this lineup. And a position of need as well. Obviously not great in the outfield defensively, not a burner on the base pass by any stretch of the imagination, but he offers more what the Jays need as opposed to Santiago Espinal. I, I just think there's too much of a log jam in the infield right now, and that's part of SB's value, his ability to play everywhere, whether it be third base, shortstop, second base. He even mixed in there in, in some uh, some outfield, if I'm not mistaken, last year. Like he, he had a couple of appearances there, so he's able to play all around the field and, and help out in that regard. But that's why you got IKF, and I think IKF's ceiling is a little bit higher considering his defensive value 
value. He's a better defender than Espinal. He's faster than Espinal. So he's going to have a clear role, whereas Santiago, I'm not too sure what his role is going to be. I, I think he'll be the last player on this roster. That That's where we're at with him right now. So if you could swap him out and get someone that's going to fill a need that you have at this point in time, I think it's a good swap. It's not exciting. It's not a big acquisition for the Blue Jays to go out and get Austin Slater, but he's an upgrade over Espinal considering what they need going forward. Yeah, he would not be, and you mentioned it, he is not an everyday player. He will be a platoon guy if he gets traded. Well, wherever he plays, he's going to be a platoon guy. And limited at-bats, but he can play the outfield better than Espinal just because Espinal hasn't played it very much at all in his major league career. And he can hit... We've seen in his limited ap uh, appearances, he has some great seasons. I mean, a 121 OPS plus in 2022. You can see back in the COVID short year, again, small sample size. But if you give him the platoon role, I'm fine with having a, a guy who hits with a 110 OPS plus off the bench compared to Espinal, who wouldn't really touch that even in his uh, at his best points of his career, which is not a uh, you know shot at Espinal. It's just the way he is. He's a glove first guy. And looking at the trade machine, I mean, they're pretty even. Maybe the Jays will have to throw in a, a late top 25 prospect. I doubt it. But... I mean, it makes sense for both teams. The Giants get a guy with a bit more uh, defensive abilities, and then the Jays get someone who can slot right into their... I mean, it would be a bench role, but I think it makes too much sense. Ben Nicholson-Smith agrees, and it's something that keeps getting brought up, and I feel like an Espinal trade is inevitable. We know the Marlins are a team that really wants to get... Uh, an infielder and maybe Santiago Espinal could be traded there. I think there's a lot of teams that could use Espinal, even if it's not a competitive yeah. team, just to see what he can give because he was an all-star just a couple years ago when he was given everyday playing time. Yeah, and we see how good Espinal could be when given everyday playing time and, and when he knows that he's not – like threatened to get out of the lineup on, on a daily basis. And, you know, he was great in that first half of his all-star season. Then he tailed off. I don't think he was ready for the rigors of playing a full 162. And we know that the Jays acquired Whit Merrifield as well. So that created some internal competition. And Whit Merrifield has been there and done that. And, and he's been a great contact hitter, one of the leaders in the AL when it comes to just base hits. And, he, he threatened the job that Santiago Espinal occupied for the most part of the season. And obviously we know what happened after that. He hasn't been the same player since. But I think with everyday playing time, and especially in a ballpark like San Francisco where power doesn't really matter and, and it's more so about base hits and putting the ball in play, Espinal could be a much more valuable player over there. And, and it's unfortunate because we, we thought that this guy would be uh, a Blue Jay for a long time, and we thought he would be a very valuable contributor because even before his all-star season, when he was playing third base and the Blue Jays didn't really have a solid option over there, he was doing a fantastic job defensively. He was coming up with some clutch hits, and he was hitting in the bottom of the order. He wasn't relied upon to do anything special. But then once the workload increased, and then once he was relied upon a little bit more, I just couldn't – I didn't see him handling it with the same kind of um, – confidence and the same kind of vigor and I think he can be very good in San Francisco but I just think he's lost his place on this Blue Jay team and anything that you can recoup that's a value would be an upgrade and it's it's sad to say because he had a lot more value probably 18 months ago than he does now but this is where we're at and you got to try to get someone that's going to help your team immediately and Espinal just doesn't do that for you anymore. Yeah, and they're trying to win kind of now, but I mean we've been talking about the Espinal trade, especially with the emergence of Biggio who figures to play every day after having a phenomenal end to his season last uh, last year. So let us know what your thoughts are on this trade. I like it a lot. We mentioned it before. I'm hoping that the Jays can get some sort of trade done for Espinal because I think it's better for both sides. Now, let's quickly touch on this. On his podcast, again, he spoke out about Jorge Soler to the Jays. And, Peter, this is a bit of a surprise. I want to kind of had Twitter up in arms a little bit here. Ben Nicholson-Smith and Shai Davidi on Jorge Soler to the Jays. It just never felt like a fit for the Blue Jays. Now, whether that's what they're hearing from sources, whether that's what they're hearing from Ross Atkins, or if that's just what they're saying, I mean, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, maybe now that makes more sense given all the moves they've done. But at the start of free agency, I think he made – a lot of sense. Obviously, the biggest risk here was that he's had a lot of up and down seasons. Maybe they prefer the one year deal of Justin Turner, who had a higher or has you know a chance to compare have comparable OPS pluses next year. But I mean, they went with the the less risky option in Justin Turner for sure because Soler's going to command in theory a three year deal, maybe around 40, 45 million. But never a fit is an interesting take for me, considering that they needed home runs and that was one of the major things they lacked, if not the biggest thing. 
Yeah, it must be about the contract and uh, and the amount of money that they would have had to give him because it doesn't make sense to me either, Nick. And yeah, you probably would have had to give him three years or four years even at that. So I guess it is risky. And we know that Justin Turner alongside J.D. Martinez probably had the highest floors Definitely. of either of the DH free agents. And, and obviously they've been professional hitters their entire careers. Justin Turner, he's 39 years old, but he didn't really show his age last season. And in a DH role, if he can manage to stay healthy, you know that he's going to produce because the bat speed is still there. The eye is still there and he doesn't strike out. So I, I think the Jays looked at a lot of their struggles last year. There were, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but it, Watching this team day in, day out, Nick, it felt like they struck out a lot in key spots. So bringing in Justin Turner helps with that because he was better in clutch situations. His numbers were elevated in those scenarios, and he doesn't strike out. He was He's a 78th percentile when it comes to whiff percentage. So he's, he's right there when it comes to just putting the ball in play and, and making – the right decision up at bat. Whereas Jorge Soler is a more all or nothing approach. And we saw what that did for the Blue Jays. You know, obviously they didn't hit the home runs that we would like to see, but it was always all or nothing. And when it mattered most, they would strike out. At least that's what it felt like being a fan of this team on a daily basis. So I like the fit of Justin Turner more and more as each day goes along. I can't wait to see him play and, and the leadership as well. Brandon Belt was brought in to maybe be a leader and and be uh, be kind of an extension of the of the coaching staff and he he was goofing around a lot in the dugout and and maybe not the kind of leadership impact that the Blue Jays envisioned when bringing him in. Whereas Justin Turner, after a couple months with the Boston Red Sox in uh, in spring training, he was their leader despite only having been there for uh, for uh, a few weeks. So he was their leader after spring training, and everyone just followed suit. And he had the numbers to back it up. So I think he's going to have that similar impact on the Blue Jays. And I think this was a very smart move by the Blue Jays. We didn't really consider Justin Turner. We were all in on Jorge Soler just because of the flair that he offers and, and the, the ceiling that he has as well. We know how many home runs he can hit when he is clicking. But will he click? That was the big question mark. And the Jays ultimately went with Turner. So I'm good with it. Yeah, I mean, that was the biggest thing that kind of I wanted to take out of this was they chose Justin Turner over Jorge Soler. They could have got Soler. He would probably be a Blue Jay right now if they really wanted to pay up, but they wanted to go with Turner, who is cheaper and on less term. And you mentioned it, the veteran thing is going to be very big. We know Chris Bassett's been vocal about how happy he is to have another veteran like Turner in there. And maybe he'll be able to help some of the young, uh, younger guys. <laughs> They're not super young anymore, but the yeah. younger players that are still upcoming. But that'll wrap it up. Let us know your thoughts are on that. And if you're happy with the Turner over Soler choice, as well as a potential Austin Slater to the Jays trade. If you want to check out our video from yesterday, click on your screen now and we'll see you tomorrow.